Hello friends. I can't believe it's already the end of February. Actually today is March 1st and the amount of times that I am able to do a full wrap up on the first day of the month of the previous month like that, I'm on top of my game and it's because I feel like generally I'm usually finishing up a book or two on the first day of the month, but this time we worked it out perfectly. I finished a book yesterday and then my audiobook I'm listening to is going to take me like at least another week. So we just got to go with what we've got. And I would say that February was a much different reading month than January in a couple of different ways in the way of quantity and quality. So happy to report the quality was much improved from last month. So really that's what we care about, right? I don't care about the number of books I'm reading every month. I care about how much I'm loving the books I'm reading. Now I want to say from my perspective, to me, this is still a ton of reading, like a ton of books that I read. Um, but the quantity of books is actually much less than last month. I think I might check to see like the page count because these are all big books. So you'll see that difference that is shown in my little statistics, the graphs that I use from StoryGraph. So let's go over a couple of statistics very quickly here. Okay, so for the month of February, I read 11 books total for a total of 7,201 pages. So that is a lot. I actually want to check really quick to see how many pages. That's wild. I knew that was going to happen when I just checked for January. January was 14 books, but 6,700 pages. So I actually read more this month. Hmm. You'll see why in a minute, I suppose. Anyways, so let's skip to page number 73% of the books that I read were over 500 pages, while only 27% were 300 to 499 pages. So I think that's different from last month as well. Everything I read was fiction this month. There hasn't been any nonfiction yet this year, but that's okay. I read the majority fantasy, seven fantasy books, and then some sci-fi. I don't know what they considered a classic. Oh, Dune. <laughs> okay. And then 73% of what I read was physical books and 27% of what I read was audiobook listening. Um, that means 5,390 pages I physically read and then I listened to 56.3 hours. So if you guys have been watching my vlogs, you'll know why for the past couple of weeks I've had less listening time and then a lot more physical reading time. That'll kind of change going forward after uh, this weekend actually. So. That was just a little blip in my scheduling and how things have changed. Let's look at my rating. This is the biggest difference from last month. So of the 11 reviews, I have an average rating of 4.52 stars for the month. That's pretty phenomenal. So I had eight books that were five star reads. Like what? Um, and then I had one four star, one 3.75 star, and then one two star. So like overall, this is such a great reading month. And then here you can see just kind of like how I was reading like page numbers throughout the month and finishing and stuff like that. So let's get into the books. So how many did I listen to? Yeah, we're going to talk about the rereads first, I guess. And two of my rereads were audiobooks. With the premiere of Dune Part 2 coming out, I decided to reread Dune, which really turned into me re-listening to this book twice in a row. I just had a fabulous time. Nothing was clicking with me, so I DNF'd some audiobooks, and then I picked this back up in between every time. I am going to move on from it and continue on with other stuff in the Dune universe, though. Um, but Dune needs no explanation. If you're new on the channel and you didn't know I was Dune Obsessed, hi. I'm Brittany. I have a lot of Dune videos. I freaking love Dune. And um, yeah, you'll see more from me in the future when it comes to everything that I'm diving into. I have read all six of Frank Herbert's books for those wondering because I always get questions about that. So yes, I've read all six. Love them. I will reread all six, but I'm going to work them into reading the entire expanded Dune universe at the same time. So this brought me so much comfort and joy throughout the month of February. And I was just so, so, so excited to get to read it in preparation for seeing Dune Part 2, which is coming out. Well, actually, at this point, it is out. And I'm going with my mom and dad and Paul to see it tomorrow. So I'm really excited because this was my first Paul. 
And then um, now I have my pulse. So I just, I love it so much. And I'm so happy to have spent so much audiobook listening time in this world. Oh, needless to say, that was five stars. Another reread. So if you guys have been watching, you'll know I'm doing a ton of rereading this year. I just really am in the mood to reread my favorites via audiobook um, because I don't do the best listening to sci-fi and fantasy via audio on my first read. So that makes it tricky because that's primarily what I like to read. And so I thought, what a perfect thing to do to reread all of my favorite things and go from there. So that's what I'm going to invest a lot of my time doing this year. And this month, I decided to read The Secret History by Donna Tart for the second time. This is only my second time reading this book. Every page resonates in some way or another. Every passage is perfection. It is immaculate from the vibes to the characterization, to the setting, to the, the writing. Like every part of this is perfection in my opinion. I don't understand how people don't like this book. But I mean, same again for Dune. Like these are two of my all-time favorite books out of every category and genre ever. You're following a group of pretentious young adults at a New England college who are obsessed with the language of Greek. They have very weird obsessions with each other and their friendships. They're like an old money type of group and there's a murder that you know about from the beginning and you're watching everything unfold. It is just a beautiful masterpiece to be honest. So if you ever read this Highly recommend it. I think those were the only things that I reread this month that were both audio. So let's get into the last audiobook just so we can get all of the audio out of the way. So the only other thing I listened to this month was something that I picked up for the first time on a whim. I had no idea. This was just available through Hoopla. And I was like, okay, I'll give it a try. See if I end up liking it. Girl, perfection. I'm not even going to try to explain why this book is perfection because I mentioned in another video that Angela from Literature Science Alliance has the perfect review on this because she hits all of the major points. So I will link her review down below. Go watch her, go subscribe to her because she says what I can't in much more intelligent ways. But that is Light from Uncommon Stars by Raika Aoki. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I don't even know how to describe this. So this is set on earth. It's a science fiction part cozy, part heartwarming, part heartbreaking. Um, and you're following Katrina, um, a young transgender runaway who catches the eye of Shizuka Satomi. Shizuka Satomi has made a deal with the devil. To escape damnation, she must entice seven other violin prodigies to trade their souls for success. I forget what they call her. It's like, I really wish I could remember right now because it's a great name. Like something about the devil, I think. So you have this like Faustian deal that's made that sounds preposterous, right? It doesn't matter if it's right in this world and you don't even question it. You're just like, she made a deal with the devil. Okay, but it's not like you're reading a book about angels and devils at all. So you have those two characters, but then you also have this donut shop where... Shizuka meets Lan Tran, and she's a retired starship captain, interstellar refugee, and a mother of four. And this is where the cozy parts come in because I love the cozy donut shop vibes between this like sparked interest of Shizuka and Lan. Oh, there's just so many wonderful elements between the discussions about Katrina, who is transgender. You have Lon, who comes here as like refugees. So you have those parallels and those discussions as well. And then there's just so much, and I, and this novel is not even that long. I'm telling you, it is like less than 400 pages, but with so much impact and your heart will break when you're reading this, but at the same time, you will get the most like warm, amazing vibes as well. This is something to let it all truly soak in. I'm going to have to reread and I will happily reread this again in the future. So I know I'm missing a lot of like, I feel like there's a lot of social political points that are brought in in parallel through like sci-fi elements because there's aliens and then deals with the devil and and there's also a lot about music and violin playing that I am not musical or an instrument player of any kind and I adored those sections so even if you're not somebody who's musically inclined like you can still get a lot out of this so there were so many like social 
slash political themes brought into this by parallels to where you don't feel like you're reading something that's too in your face. It's not like shouting at you with a message. It's very subtle and it's beautiful. The writing is great. I have to read this again. I absolutely love this. So once again, watch her review because she really says way more intelligent things than I did, but I'm just gushing about how much I loved it. This was five stars, absolutely. Going from five stars to two stars. You guys, I have a whole rant about this next book. Actually, I saved it in my notes on my phone, I think, because I was so mad reading this book. And I was like, no, I'm gonna forget everything and I need to remember why I hated this book. So the book that I gave two stars to, and I, I honestly think is a bad book, I'm sorry to say, is The Last Watch by J.S. Dews. I really wanted to love this and this did not work in any way, shape or form. I think that it had so many great ideas and just the execution absolutely sucked. And I felt so validated by all the two star reviews I read when I was like, okay, this isn't just like hate. I mean, I hate read this book. If I was rating it on personal enjoyment, I would have rated it a one out of five stars. It was that not good in my opinion. So initially you're dumped into this world with absolutely zero context. The synopsis sucks on the back of this book, but that's because I don't even know what you could say about this book. So there's this divide, the edge of the universe, and it's basically like closing in on everyone. And there's this like ragtag group of people that are sent out at the edge of the divide. And then you have Adequin Rake, which is a character I can't freaking stand. She basically has nothing. She doesn't know what's going on. No one can help her. And she's trying to like save everyone and everything. She's humanity's last chance, it says. So you're dumped in, absolutely zero context. You don't know why anything's important. And I feel like if it's executed well, then it's fine to do that. But in this circumstance, no, it was just absolutely no time to get grounded or care about any characters. So therefore you can't get invested in the book and the plot and what's happening. Speaking of, even after reading this whole book, never once was I invested in any character whatsoever. I will actually say the one who, Cavalon Mercer, genius asshole exiled prince like no the, the the characterization is so bad in this that they are all archetypes and fell completely flat i liked his character the most out of this but overall i felt nothing for the characters there was also a lot of like sciencey stuff in this that didn't necessarily make sense and it wasn't just like i'm not smart enough it all went over my head i just think that it genuinely wasn't done well and explained well i'm not sorry for tearing this apart i mean like this author is smarter than me. I can't write a book to begin with, period. So like, it's not like I could do better. I just, I don't think this was good. With the lack of characterization, again, you have this Adequin Rake, who's this main sir boss commander, and she is just like a hard ass. And she's your typical hard ass. I hated her. She was so like much of that cookie cutter archetype that you've seen five million times and it was so annoying she was also so self-sacrificing like time and time again she would try to make the wrong choice to let herself die to save her crew and it's like that's not even what you're supposed to be doing like that's not your role like why would you like okay we get it you want to sacrifice yourself because you don't care like I'm over it. I just think that the characterization, the side characters could have all been interchanged. There was absolutely nothing that stood out about any side character in this. So I think that's one of my biggest gripes with this is the characterization. You never got any history of the world building and how we got here. I mean, like the tiniest little bits, sure, but not enough to care, not enough to know, like, you, you have a million questions and they're not going to get answered in this. And so you would, I, that's why I kept reading it. Cause I was like, I want to be able to review this. It's almost 500 pages. And I thought by the end, surely we're going to know exactly how we got here and what happened. And do you get little answers? Yeah, but not enough. It's not in depth enough for a 500 page book, in my opinion. Once again, the stakes are high and people can die, but it just, you don't care because you're not invested. There's also a random love story in this. And I was like, why did you put this in here? Like why? I love a love story. I love having romance in my books, whether they're sci-fi or fantasy. But if it's going to be like this, like I love reading a book without romance in it too. And so you have these weird random love scenes that appear to make no sense at all. You don't feel any chemistry between the characters. None of it feels believable because you didn't witness anything before and you just have these little scenes here and there. And then at the end, they're supposed to be impactful. I felt absolutely nothing. The romance 
shouldn't have been here. The royalty element in this, for the longest time, you're like, how is this relevant? And then when things kind of get explained a little bit, you're still like, how is this relevant? I see like maybe there's a setup for relevancy in the future, but I do feel like it should have had more payoff in this book itself. Um, I already said that about the side characters. So I got to page 302 and I was finally like, oh, maybe I could get invested in this. And then we do this thing where something goes wrong on the ship and they have to like fix something on the ship to get it to move. And then we spend 50 pages doing that. And so then you lose all lack of momentum, all lack of caring, and you just don't care anymore. I'm probably making this too long for a wrap up. And then one of the things that was my biggest pet peeve too is the main male and female characters. So Rake and then Mercer. They tell their backstories finally to each other and it's in the form of like, she's like, why don't you tell me a story then? And he's like, okay, so once there was this boy and then he tells her his story and then later on she does the same thing in the format. I'm like, that's so lazy. That's such an excuse of a way to do like world building and history and development of characters. I hated that. So yeah, that, that was like most everything that I have in just why this is a two star read. Like save yourself the time. I've talked to so many people that were like, yeah, I don't know how it has good reviews. We did not read the same because I have really high standards for my sci-fi and like reading this sci-fi book in comparison to this was they're not even comparable. They're not even on the same plane. And I feel bad because I think this author has a lot of potential and I hate bashing a book that somebody's like work of art and creation. And I do think that she has a lot of potential. Her writing seems very intelligent. And I mean, the, actually the sentence structure is clunky at times, but the ideas itself are there. And I just hope in the future she can execute them a little bit better. I would never continue on with this because I have no sense of caring about the characters at this point. But in the future, maybe I'd pick something else up again to see if the improvement has happened. So that was a whole lot of complaining. What else should we talk about? One that I'm not really going to say much at all about that I finished is Crescent City Book 3, House of Flame and Shadow by Sarah J. Mass. So I have an entire spoiler filled vlog that you can go watch if you're interested in my thoughts on this. If you don't really care and you're not sure or you don't want a spoiler vlog yet because you don't know if you're going to read it, I gave this five out of five stars. It was book candy. It was so intoxicating. I couldn't put it down. I finished this 800 page book in a handful of days because I just couldn't stop reading it. It was so comforting and familiar and engaging. And could I pick it apart and critique a lot of it? Yes. And a lot of the memes that people are creating about this book are funny as hell because they're true. And I don't care. I love it. It is so entertaining. It is so gripping. And it truly reminds me of why I started reading and what makes me be a reader. And so for that, I have to give it five stars on pure enjoyment level alone, flaws and all. So if you want my, it's a very in-depth spoiler review. I pretty much talk about like all plot points because I vlogged it as I went. So if you are curious about my in-depth thoughts, I'll link that below because it's definitely worth your time reading in my opinion. Okay, I have three books to talk about that are sequels as well. And then I have three books that are the beginning of a new series. So let's talk about some sequels first. Um, I spoke about this series a couple months ago. Uh, this is The Bitter Crown by Justin Lee Anderson, and it begins with The Lost War. I picked this up because I love this artist, and I believe it's the same. If it's not, I'm going to be... Yeah, Lauren Pain Pinto and Jeremy Wilson. So I recognized the cover artist, and I just thought it looked worth looking into. And this is a really fun, oh my God, I think it's Irish inspired world and like language and stuff. And you have, I don't even, there's no quick way to talk about this book. You, I can't talk about the sequel at all completely. Even saying one thing about the sequel would totally spoil book one, but you have this droid who they're hated by people and he's the king's envoy and they're supposed to go on this mission to, to determine something. And basically they find out a lot of lies along the way. The magical elements in this are really dark and fun. There's necromancy. There's a lot of like really dark creatures and the character banter is excellent. I love the characterization in this. I think the plot is really fun. It's just compelling and engaging from start to finish. I think I gave this 
a, I might have given this a 3.75. And if that's the case, I think I'm going to move it up to a four because I just really had a great time with this. I think it's a really strong new fantasy series and it's not something that's ever going to be like a favorite of all time, but it's dependable. And like, I need that in my life, just a fantasy series that I can pick up, know that I'm not going to have problems with and have a good time with it and enjoy the characters, enjoy the magic in the world building, have it be dark without taking itself too seriously. So if you like that vibe, if you like Joe Abercrombie vibe, but like a little more, it's not a lighthearted world, but I think it just doesn't take itself overly serious. And that's a compliment in my opinion. So if you like those vibes, please pick up The Lost War because I really love this series. Now the other two were both five star reads. One I read the majority of in January to begin with. So that's why the page numbers are a little bit skewed. I think I probably only read the last like 200 pages in February, but that's okay. So that is Mad Ship by Robin Hobb. Gave this five out of five stars. And then I just finished yesterday Ship of Destiny by Robin Hobb. Surprise, five out of five stars as well. These are truly phenomenal. Some of the best fantasy books I've ever, ever, ever read. Like, like this is classic fantasy at its finest. It's feminist. It's engaging. It is heartwarming and heartbreaking. The characterization is 10 out of 5. It is top-notch characterization and world-building. I am obsessed and in love with every single female character in this series, and I think they are so fully fleshed out. There's so much nuance to their characters. She knows how to write a great character arc, whether that's going to break your heart and destroy you, or if that is going to make you happy and you fall more in love with a character. Um, I absolutely am in love with the world here. I am just beyond devastated that there is not any more books in this trilogy. And I would love a trilogy for each and every woman in this separately. Like, I don't want to say anything because spoilers, but like each girl should get their own trilogy and I would read, I would just read it forever. I don't even care what they're doing. I would just read all of them. The only thing I'll say about Ship of Destiny is that the end, this is like the tiniest little nitpick. I wish we were in the heads of the women more at the end because we were so much throughout the rest of the books. I mean, it's like 900 pages, so I get that it's hard to do that because you would add a lot more pages. But I just wanted to know how they were feeling more as things were wrapping up because I know I had 5 million emotions and I just was like, what are you feeling though as all of these things are happening? Because I'm that annoying type of girlfriend that's like, what are you thinking about? 10 minutes later, what are you thinking? <laughs> I just want to know all the time. So that I just, I don't have words. I'm speechless. This is amazing. This is wonderful. This is brilliant, beautiful. All of the good, amazing reviews. Probably one of my favorite fantasy trilogies ever written, to be honest. And so um, if I were to truly go into why these are so good, I would need to make an entire video about it. So perhaps I will do that. But I feel like it's not one that needs that. I mean, like most everyone knows Robin Hobb is good. So I don't think she needs like people to be out here championing, championing for her being like, yeah, read Robin Hobb. Three more. Okay. I'm going to save my favorite of the month for last. Let's go with The Blighted Stars by Megan O'Keefe next. This is the start of a new sci-fi trilogy and I read her previous trilogy. I highly recommend you read that first because she has made so many improvements in this one and it blew me out of the water. This was five out of five stars. This was, this is how you do sci-fi, ma'am. This is how you do sci-fi. It was so good. So they're stranded on this planet. You have a revolutionary and she is, without giving things away, a rebellious person trying to bring down this high ranking family. And then you have the heir to the dynasty, this family, Tarquin Mercator. And he's sort of like, I don't want to say the disappointment of the family. These two end up stranded on a planet together, except she is sort of disguised as someone else. So you don't know who she is. And they're trying to solve this mystery of what's happened to this planet, which is something similar that's happened to other planets. Humans can't really live on Earth anymore, so they need places to live. And Naira, the main character, thinks that Tarquin's family are responsible for it. And that's why she's sort of trying to bring them down. This is full of twists and turns. 
creepy horror, like creepy things in this. Excellent like sci-fi elements. The characters are amazing. I love this brash, harsh female and this softer male combination. I loved the creepy, eerie elements of this world that they're stranded on together. I loved the technical scientific aspects of this that I don't want to spoil so that you can read it. This was just amazing from start to finish. I think everyone's loving this that's reading this for good reasons. But like I said, if you're planning on reading both of her trilogies, I do think her other trilogy is worth reading. Um, but I do think you should read it first. So that way, you know, you can kind of go with her as she grows as an author. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's all I can really say. Five out of five stars. Read it. Has a lot of great elements to it. Then we're going to go with one that really shocked me. Actually, both of these last ones, I believe, are both self-published romanticy, and they both shocked me. This one shocked me a little bit less than the other, so I'm going to go with this one first. And that is Spark of the Everflame by Penn Cole. So you're following this main character. She's a healer, just like her mother was. And they live in this world where you either have powers or you don't. You're descended or you're mortal. And the descended live in you know their own place they have everything they need and they don't mix with the mortals mortals are poor and looked down upon and just treated very badly and she has to be the healer to go to like the descendants let's just say castle for sake of time work on a royal family member and what can i say that's not spoilery her mother disappears in the beginning of this book which sort of leads her to that task that i just explained and then she just uncovers this world of secrets that she never knew about. She's also going through some really weird stuff inside of herself, like trying to figure out things that are really happening because her mother has gave her this medicine so that she doesn't have visions type of thing. And then it's a hate to love romance. And I hate hate to love. And this is done impeccably. It's perfection. So this is very basic fantasy, right? Like this is not going to be really expansive and new and inventive and something we haven't seen before. But when I tell you this book also had me in a chokehold, I could not stop thinking about this book from the time that I put it down until today when I started the sequel, because it was that freaking good and the sequels are really good. I gave it four out of five stars. Um, I think that's the rating that I finally went with just because, like I said, it wasn't like super, but it didn't just feel like the point of it was the romance. It felt like the point of it was what's happening with this fantasy world and then there's an enemies to it. It's slow burn, ladies. It's slow burn. Uh, so that is something that I absolutely adore as well. The sibling relationships are great. Um, there's friendships just all around the characterization in this is great. And so I think I docked it because you have this like rebellion and that's just something that we've read about 5 million times, but I don't know, it had a grip on me and I cannot wait to continue with the series. It might be about four or five books. Um, it reads really quickly, like the font and spacing is really big. So I love this. This is something I will be recommending for quite some time. So this last one, I'm not really going to speak about too much because I just filmed a spoiler free review right before this and I talked about it for like 12 minutes straight. And so I feel like that's long enough, but probably my favorite thing I read this month. And then one of my favorite books of the entire year, I already know it, even though it's only been February is When the Moon Hatched by Sarah A. Parker. I will give this 100 out of 5 stars if I could. It was that good. This is also a fantasy romance. Very slow burn because of tropes that I'm not going to say involving dragons and this. Just go watch my review if you're at all curious. It's not a romanticy. It is a fantasy with a subtle romance. It is not a, like, just enemies. You have a sweet cinnamon roll male and a very feisty female and uh just go watch my review okay promise me you're gonna go watch my review if you're going to go watch it or you've watched it already give me a dragon emoji because I hate leaving it out in this wrap-up but I literally just talked about it for 12 minutes straight so I've kind of said everything I could say there but favorite of the month this people need to not be sleeping on. I'm not going to keep gatekeeping it because everyone needs it in their life that is interested in fantasy. Beautiful writing, amazing characterization, excellent world building, the vibe, the atmosphere, the tone. It's all impeccable in my opinion and I'm obsessed with it. So 
somehow. You can tell I like these books way more or besides the one that I hated because this wrap up I think is longer than last week even though there are less books. So that's everything I read in the month of February. It felt great to sit here and talk about books that I loved and books that made me really happy this month. Tell me what you guys read in February in the comments down below and let's chat about any of these books if you guys have read them too. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time. I've been thinking too much